Welcome to Virtual Jane Con. This is Harmonica Cave, Courtney, or Scribe. This is my second presentation for Virtual Jane Con. Um, previously, I spoke about another visual medium, but today we're going to be talking about historical comics. Now, there are not many Regency graphic novels. Perhaps that's obvious, because graphic novels weren't invented back then. But I'm serious when I note that many historical settings in comics aren't based in reality, or are based on the more fantasy Middle Ages, Edwardian, Victorian, really any time with ball gown fashion the artists seemed to love to create. Jane's older sister Cassandra was known for her main reference for Jane Austen herself, um, a portrait or two in watercolor, and some art for Jane's Juvenilia. But everything used to be a drawing. From early editions of Austen's novels, um, engraved print illustrations, newspapers, historical records, artists kept records of what life was like before photography. In Jane Austen's time, illustrated jokes were known as caricatures, little captioned panels similar to many of today's political one-panel comics. Mr. Malcolm's List deals with caricatures from the 18th and 19th centuries. Barbara Monaghan published an article in 2012 called Caricatures, Tabloids of the Regency. The wealthy would have standing orders with print shops for their caricatures, she wrote. Alternatively, they would send servants to buy the latest prints. Some scandalous prints, such as the one about the secret marriage of the Prince of Wales and Mrs. Fitzherbert, were so popular that the printer couldn't produce them quickly enough. People who couldn't afford to buy prints were able to view those on display in the print shop window. It reminds me of many scenes of people on the street watching the news unfold on a stack of TVs. Um, a crowd would gather, and those who were literate would read aloud whatever wording was on the prints. Because the caricaturists couldn't afford to refuse work, they could be considered disreputable, but they did provide a great service to criticize bad behavior from any levels of society. So they're very important to history and to kind of that gossip culture that we love. I feel like modern day caricatures are the comic strip. Hark a Vagrant by Kate Beaton is one of my favorite examples of this, and thankfully she draws quite a bit of Jane Austen jokes. Hark a Vagrant also is the origin of Edgar Allan Poe reading a letter and squinting in surprise meme. Additionally, in modern comics, Marvel has some Jane Austen adaptations. They have four books, Northanger Abbey, Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, and Emma, all by Nancy Butler as the writer, with a few different artists. Indie comics also have their share of Jane Austen work. You'll find a few other adaptations and references to Jane Austen on any large enough graphic novel shelf. Besides thanking the public domain, I also thank my public library every day for so many historical novels with illustrated and comic versions available for free for my use. My local librarian wouldn't let me leave without tracking down a back-breaking adaptation of Moby Dick. I feel that self-publishing novels have long allowed for a strong flow of Austin-inspired work to reach audiences that crave it. So now Webtoon and other comic publishing platforms have continued to give more niche interests a platform to thrive and connect to audiences. Uh, comics now have so many romantic, dramatic, and slice-of-life stories. So webcomics, yeah, they're where romance lives now. In case you're worried that DC was lost in Austin, their webtoon, Batman Wayne Family Adventures, has a wonderful scene between a Robin and a former Robin learning about Pride and Prejudice. I'm impressed with webtoon canvas artists Cam Space and Ada Piccolo. Um, they're not the only Austin artists, but these are artists making the story come to life because they love it and not because they're getting paid. Many webcomics seem Regency inspired, if we ignore the fashion. Perhaps my favorite detail about historic comics, especially on a platform like Webtoon or Manta, are the impressive amounts of high nobility as love interest. Every kingdom has at least one or two eligible dukes. Here's a rundown. From a knight to a lady. First night with the duke. Long after Leveling the ending, up my the duke's teddy bear, the, the duke's cursed Taming charm, the Marquess. charming Shall the duke of the north. Grace? I could go on. 
if you are looking for the right feeling of history without being bothered by fashion and facts, here are a few webtoons that I absolutely encourage you to check out. Miss Abbott and the Doctor and Lady Liar. They are fabricated time periods with modern ideals um, and very inclusive. Fellingholm Hall is very historical. It's not the right place and time, but it is the United Kingdom. Rise and Fall has supernatural historical whales as its setting. Imaginarium, that's turn of the 1900s. It's a fairy tale. This author, story seamstress, loves Jane Austen. I'm going to talk a bit more later about Answer Me, My Prince, but I can't recommend it enough. Unladylike, hilarious. A woman gets trapped in Victorian England and does not realize what's going on. A lot of embarrassing things happen. In a fun way, in a fun way. Uh, the Botanist seems to have a Regency dress, but it isn't like that in the story so much, so it's mostly fantasy. Serena is a beautiful drama on Webtoon. It's a uh, Webtoon original as well. Has its own invented country, very historical feeling. It's just some beautiful fashion. So if you love fashion, not particular Regency fashion, check it out. For fans of Persuasion, I recommend I'm the Queen in This Life. What if Anne Elliot traveled back in time to redo her teenage years? If you need persuasion-level yearning, plus more letters written between lovers than you can count, you have to check out Answer Me, My Prince. It is absolutely created by someone who loves to read and loves to share that with others. What if Anne got plastic surgery to fit in better? That's my ID is Gangnam Beauty. For fans of Sins and Sensibility, consider Brass and Sass. As a story of if Marianne Dashwood joined a high school band despite never having played an instrument before. If Eleanor Dashwood had a life-shortening curse, you're going to want to read Sable House. If it was Marianne with the curse, you might be more interested in I thought my life was ending. Protect the Night answers what if Edward Ferris could not follow his heart because he'd been turned into an action figure. And Men of the Harem follows what Marianne Dashwood might do if she couldn't marry her first love and was the emperor of a powerful country. The webcomic Crumbs will have you asking, what would Fanny Price's everyday order be at a magical bakery? And for more Mansfield Park-themed goodness, try To My First Love or Little Lady Mint. You'll find falling in love with the man who provided you a safe home, but is thankfully not your relative. Sanadon fans, I haven't forgotten you. My top recommendation is The Blind Prince. We could all use more stories about a heroine of color overcoming some sketchy rich neighbors not having her best interest in mind. There's also a lot of mystery. Emma fans, I have a Frank Churchill and Jane Fairfax style love story. A modern telling of the two falling in love at school called Our Beloved Summer. If you've ever wondered what a mess Emma Woodhouse could make if she tried to make her own matchmaking, you'll like The Kiss Bet. Match Made in Hell is especially great for fans of Clueless. The idea is if Mr. Knightley was Emma's foolish ex-crush neighbor, perhaps the most on the nose is she's hopeless where Mr. Knightley is in the role of Emma's secret bodyguard. I love Northanger Abbey, and I love Morgana and Oz. I like how Catherine Morland could be an inept witch who accidentally curses Henry Tilney and he turns into a cat. Fans of K-drama may already know about extraordinary attorney Wu, but I like to think of it as if Henry Tilney was the only person outside of her family who would listen to Catherine talk about her hyperfixation horror. I mean whales. For Pride and Prejudice, imagine if Mr. Bennett actually sought out suitors for his favorite daughter. But all the bachelors were mythical monsters. That's the monster's bride. I'd love it if Elizabeth Bennett could control Mr. Darcy with a knockoff stuffed animal mascot. I think this trope needs to catch on. So I highly recommend Act Like You Love Me. If you like enemies to lovers, or maybe reversed, and you like the not handsome enough to tempt me scene, you must read Cursed Princess Club, a graphic novel published now. Ask your library for it. Go to the store and buy it. Do all the above. I'm including this under 
Pride and Prejudice, but it's really its own ridiculous thing. You've got to read After School Lessons for Unripe Apples. There's middle school pride and hurt feelings. There's height prejudice between the tallest and the shortest person in class. As a big fan of love and friendship and a supporter of Frederica, sorry, Lady Susan, I think that Operation True Love is definitely worth a look. Um, There are a lot of attractive drawings and a lot of silliness and drama. That is just a sample. Going into your library or your favorite comic book shop can get you so many more recommendations. And if you're looking for more advice or want to fangirl with me, find me on Instagram or Twitter at Harmonica Cave. And don't forget to like and subscribe.